the city of Corral, one of the most ancient cities in the Americas, was found in the year 2000. Tons of temples, sacred locations, and pyramids were built towards a cascading sunset toward the sea. And in the game Corral by Fun Tales, we are going to take you back 4,000 years to show you those ancient settlements and to have you help build the pyramids. The game plays two to four players, takes roughly an hour to play, and is for ages 13 and up. Are you ready to visit the pyramids of Corral? Well, first the setup, then of course how to play, and finally my review of the game, which you can find on Kickstarter with a link down below. So let's talk about the setup of the game Corral. The first thing you'll do is take the game board and place it in the middle of the playing area and within reach of all players. Then go ahead and place all the Corrali figures in the Corrali space on the side of the game board. Next, you'll go clockwise and place stones, your resource deck, which is also shuffled, and of course your camels. Then take the central pyramid bottom space and place it in the middle of the board. Each player is also going to receive a player figure on their start space, the main high priest and the high priest die, one Corali figure in each of the quarries, and then each player will also assign a Corali to one of the small squares. Additionally, a pyramid space will receive the bottom pyramid portion for each player in the game. Then that will be the finish for the main game board. You'll also take the progress strip board and place it next to the main game board so that you know what happens when pyramids trigger and when of course the main temple is being built. Additionally, each player will receive a player board. Player boards will start with one camel each and you'll get one or two resources of stones as well as four or more resource cards based on what player <laughs> order you are in. After that, set aside any additional components as well as, of course, the honor or favor board and, of course, the pyramids in the game, and you are ready to begin the game. Playing the game Corral is simple. You're going to start by selecting the first player. That player will also be the high priest. To begin the game, that player will roll the high priest die and move the high priest that many spaces. Sometimes they'll have the option to choose. Spaces will follow a path rotated clockwise around the board leading towards the middle, which is the final ceremony. Then they will move their character based on how many spaces they can move. They can move based on the number of camels on their board. The beginning movement is four, but it can go all the way to eight based on the number of camels they have in the spaces adjacent to them. After they've moved their character that many number of spaces, they can then perform an action. You may only perform an action if you are on or farther past the high priest. You may never make an action if the priest has passed that space. When choosing actions, there are quite a few in the game. One is you're able to gather stones based on the amount of workers in the quarry where you're gathering the stones from. The next is you can draw two cards from the resource deck. Then you can also gather a camel and place it on your board, which gives you higher movement. And then finally, the other one is you can go ahead and take a worker or a Corali citizen, place it in one of the quarries, place it on top of the highest point of your temple to score your point at the end of the year, or place it in one of the many small square locations adjacent to the larger square locations, allowing you to build pyramids whenever you come across them. Note that the high priest may only move between the large action spaces, whereas players will move between those and any started or finished pyramid space as well. So basically players will take longer to cross the board as the game goes on because pyramid spaces are going to count as movement steps in order for them to get to the end. When either the high priest or one of the characters reaches the final ceremony, that will trigger the end of the year. Based on who reached there first will be the high priest. If the high priest reaches it, then the active player will remain the high priest for the next year. Players will do a scoring aspe aspect based on the number of uh, hi uh, height of the temple, <laughs> as well as they will receive bonus points for any priests on top of their temples. They're going to get bonus cards for each temple that has been finished or started by them. And then each player, and of course the high priest, will reset and continue the game. And the game is going to keep going just like that. Players are going to move around the board, attempt to build specific locations. Uh, another action space that will open up up eventually is the locations that have the pyramids that have been started. You can only land on your own space to build anything there, but you'll have to pass opponent spaces and you'll be spending bricks in order to do so. Bricks are going to be a valuable resource as you attempt to build more and more on a specific space. You may only build one time each time you reach a pyramid space. And if you have cards in your hand, resource cards, you're going to be using them for a variety of things. 
One thing you'll use them for is you can spend one of them in order to move an additional movement in addition to whatever movement you have to begin with. If you use two on your turn, you may only use that type once per turn, but you can use all the types in one turn. They will allow you to build additional spaces on a pyramid. They will let you move additional spaces and take an extra action or perform the same action more than once on a space that you're currently on. The last thing that these cards are used for is the final ceremony, in which case basically players are going to donate a number of cards from their hand as sacrifices at the end of every year. And for each card that they donate, they have a higher probability of gaining more favor with the gods. If you donate nothing, you lose a favor. And if you donate something in between, you'll gain a favor. And that's basically the idea of the game. And it will continue until somebody builds seven pyramids, or altogether, cumulatively, seven pyramids are built, I should say. Or what will happen is the priest and or players go around the board seven times, in which case you will tally up the number of points you have based on the pyramids that you have built, based on the unfinished pyramids that you have, and based on any resources you might have acquired through the game as bonus resource points. And whoever has the most favor of the gods is the winner. There's also a ton of different variants in the game that I haven't talked about because I'd like you to go ahead and check the campaign out and see for yourself because there's quite a bit. This is just the basic idea of what is going on here and already you can see that there's a lot. All right, so let's talk about my review now. So Corral is basically a rondelle type game, but you're not getting more actions as you're behind. Really what's happening is the priest is moving along slowly but surely, and you have to kind of keep up with him before you can make any actions. If you try and if you're staying behind him, you're in trouble, which is normally never a thing that you have to worry about, but it's just a way to progress the game moving forward. Uh, you can also move back and forth when you're playing your characters, which is really nice because if you want to perform one specific action that's farther along on the board, and come back and maybe build your temple more, you can do that as long as the priest hasn't made it there fast enough. Uh, there are different types of pyramids in the game too. You can build uh, three stack pyramids and you can also build the five stack pyramids. And when you build them, you'll place different priests on them. Priests will give you points every time a year ends. And so it's worth gathering those points as you move along. It's also a good strategy too, to maybe start building quicker so that you can gather additional cards based on the number of unfinished and finished buildings you get. Resource cards in general cost two whenever you, or, or give you two whenever you spend an action on the space there. But if you have three buildings built or unbuilt and one person only has one, you're basically obtaining a free action for doing so each round. So it can be beneficial, but there's a cost because other players will take other actions on your turn or on their turns that might speed them along in the game as well. You're using uh, the different quarry guys, your little Corelli, to basically mine the quarries, allowing you to gather more resources, allowing you to build higher temples and faster. Your resource cards are not only useful as far as actions go or movement, but also at the end of every round, especially as the rounds progress, you're going to need to discard more cards of a specific type than other players in order to gain bonus victory points. So you have to be kind of aware of when and how you want to spend these things. For me, I was burning through a lot of cards early on in order to obtain enough structures to thusly let me get free cards later on in the game. And that was one way that it paid off for me. But you really can create a ton of different strategies with this car, these cards. And gaining points early on is not bad. One and two victory points are actually pretty solid in this game. And it's always gonna come down really close. You have this board here, which is going to explain to you based on the uh, pyramids that you're building, uh, when th certain things will occur, certain events. When you're playing the base mode, what's going to happen is when the second, fourth, sixth, and seventh pyramid space from the main ceremony is going to be built, which will also trigger the end of the game. And also, whenever you build your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh pyramid, that player is going to get favor. And favor of the gods is the only thing that's important. And as you basically gain favor on this track, you'll be moving around. And each time you move around the track, you're going to place your little marker on the 20, then 40, then 60, then 80. It's a way of keeping additional track or score of what you're doing with favor. Uh, there is a ton of additional variants to the game, which I really appreciate as well. Uh, I won't talk about too much because I want to kind of let you guys look at the campaign, but you have like the emissary board, which uh, something unique happens with this. Uh, you're going to have extra building spaces here, which will take off. And whenever a certain pyramid is built, instead of doing nothing now, the game actually pro provides you with something more to do. And um, you're also kind of not really working with other players, but you're not really working against them either. You can manipulate the board and make it a little more challenging for them to be able to build pyramids. And you can kind of deduce what they're doing and uh, 
re realize what type of cards they have in their hand and kind of change the way your hand is made based on what they're doing. And it might be even a beneficial thing in order to maybe discard two specific action cards, take an extra bonus action of drawing two cards. That way you can just kind of manipulate your hand to make sure that you have the most of a specific type of card in order to get the final ceremony bonus because those get to be very, very strong at the end of the game. The game is short and sweet, but full of complexity and full of strategy. Uh, this is a solid game with a beautiful, beautiful board. I really, really enjoyed the theme of this game. I, I love any of these ancient culture type games and something that's not straight up just like a Euro where I'm just moving pieces around is even more interesting and even more fun. Uh, this has been a wonderful experience. This is one game I'd recommend even at two players. I had a ton of fun playing this at just two players, but three and four players are just as great, if not even a little better because the board starts changing a little bit more and players start uh, not competing with just one another, but all players and having to be a little more conscientious of what cards and resources are going around. If you're interested in a game that's a little bit thinky, a little bit um, player movement, resource control, building these beautiful pyramids at the end of the game, uh, this is something I would strongly recommend you take a look at. Uh, this, this game kind of reminds me of games that board and dice would make as far as complexity and th thematic like aspects, but it has its own unique twist on how this board is made and how the pieces are going to be moving across as you have to kind of calculate when and where you want to go with the fact that you might not always be in control Control of this priest and where he may go may thwart your plans. Overall though, Crawl is an excellent, excellent game. And if this seems even remotely interesting to you, I would suggest giving it a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Corral by Funtales. If you're interested, like I said before, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game on Kickstarter. If you're a fan of ancient cultures like me, and you also like to build little pyramids on a game board with a meaty, medium weight to medium heavy, somewhere in there, strategy type, type game with a very easy style, then this is something to take a look at. You can also go ahead and check out our website on filteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And of course, you can check out our live streams every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one every week. All right, guys, Patreons, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys every month donating. It helps us create more content. It helps us do our live streams and helps us ship out games. Um, Moonshell is on its way and it's on the boats. So we'll give you an update this week. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to building the pyramids and temples of Corral with you next time. <laughs>